Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. Today uh, I thought we would talk about the Orthodox incenser uh, for the sermon. as more of a teaching uh, tool today uh, to explain the different parts of the incenser and how they glorify Christ. Uh, one thing I've noticed in the Orthodox Church all the tools that we used are to bring glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is one of the items uh, that we use a lot during the liturgy is the, uh, of the Orthodox censer. And it has many parts, and I want to go through quickly and describe these parts. The bottom, see this bottom here represents the earth. And then this hood here represents the church. And then you see the chains and the bells. So I'm going to talk about all of this here in a moment. So remember I said the bottom is the earth. Now within the, uh, the bottom part is charcoal and incense. And the charcoal is a picture of mankind. You say, well, how is that possible? Well, when we're ignited at birth and then we go through our life, uh, we struggle and we go through uh, trials and tribulations. And so the charcoal is kind of a, you know, we, we started with a, with a torch or a candle that start burning. And so as our life begins, we, we begin burning, hopefully for the Lord. And then we place the incense on top of the charcoal, and as you see, it gives off smoke. And the smoke is our prayers that as we go through life, we're covered by the church, which is the top part of the Thiemuto, and the incense uh, that is smoking now is our prayer. So as we are going through our struggles in life, that the smoke arising from the incense is our prayers unto heaven. You'll see that there are three chains around the theme yet all, or the incenser. And the three chains is representative of the Holy Trinity that keeps the church together in unity. There's a center chain that goes all the way up to the top. And that's uh, that chain is from... The, is, it's fashioned on a cross. The chain goes all the way up. It's in the middle. And what that means is that, that pathway to heaven. So we have the Holy Trinity surrounding the church and our pathway to heaven through the single chain. Then you notice all the bells. There are 12 bells on this incenser. And that is for the Holy Apostles. So that kind of gives you a little uh, tour of the uh, Orthodox incenser. In the Greek we call it the Thymieto. The bottom is earth, the charcoal is mankind, the incense is our prayers, the top hood is the church, because we have to be in the church. The, the, our fathers tell us, without the church there is no salvation. If you're outside of the church, there is no salvation. That's our church fathers. So you see the, uh, the demonstration here of what's going on how the smoke is coming, uh, going, ascending into heaven. So that's kind of a, a quick thumbnail of, of the Orthodox incenser. Now we're going to get more specific here in a moment. When we have Vespers, our Vesper service, we sing Psalm 141, verse 2. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense, and let the lifting up of my hands be an evening sacrifice. So we sing that every time we have a Vesper service. Also, if you look in Revelation chapter 4, And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. So we see two, there's many more references of 
uh, incense in Scripture, but I wanted to focus on those two this morning. So I talked about what the incenser looks like and all the parts of the incense, of the incenser in the church. But something else uh, that caught my attention is the beginning of our worship. Uh, when God called Moses to build a tabernacle, and in obedience, Moses built the tabernacle perfectly uh, to God's design. I think it took about 50 chapters uh, of God talking with Moses to give him all the instructions on how to build this portable worship center because that's what God wants. He wants to be worshipped. You know, he's, he's God. He's holy, then he's holy, then all holy. And uh, can't look upon sin. So he had Moses uh, build this tabernacle so the people, the Jews, could come and bring a sacrifice for their sins. One of the altars in the tabernacle is the altar of incense. And you can go through Exodus and look this all up. I'm going to spend time this morning on that, but I want to focus on, on the incense that God ordered Moses to make. And it was only be, to be used in the tabernacle. It was holy unto God. So Exodus chapter 30, verse 34 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Take up unto thee sweet spices, stekta, anika, galbanum, and these sweet spices with pure frankincense, of each there shall be like weight. Now you probably never heard of those terms before, unless you're a Bible scholar, and, uh, and read intently uh, the, the, what Moses was uh, ordered by God to do. So I'm going to talk about those ingredients and how they relate to prayer, how they apply to our prayer life. The first item we run across in, in Exodus 30, 34 is stekta. What is that? I've never heard of that word stekta before. And the research came up with this. It was, a, it was one component used in temple incense, whether it be the tabernacle of Moses or Solomon's temple. As specified, like I said, in Exodus 30, 34. The Hebrew word nataf means drop. D-R-O-P, drop. And it corresponds to Job 36, 27 of drops of water. So, what's the application? Ah, when we pray, we can move into spontaneous tears. We can, as we pray unto the Lord, be moved into weeping, into shedding tears. They're spontaneous tears. So that's why God says you will use this ingredient called stekta, which I just told you what it is. If you want to know more about it, you can always go on the internet and find out more about uh, these, these four ingredients. The next one is called anika. Now what is anika? I've never heard that word either. It is simply the operculum of a family of mollusks. So that makes it seas, snails in the sea, mollusks. They can only be found in the southern seas, which has always been used as, in, as an incense ingredient. The Babylonians first mentioned it as super ta tamti, meaning sea fingernail. Now what is all this? Where am I going with this one? because of the mollusk shell, which remembers a human fingernail, okay? We call it a trap door. And you think about, God said, take those, that that's little mollusk and take off that trap door, take it off. And I said, well, what is the application by, by doing that? What's a, how can we apply that to prayer? Well, when you pull that little trap door off the, off the snail, the mollusk, he's vulnerable, isn't he? That was his protection that's been removed. So we are to be vulnerable in prayer. We are to have open hearts so we can effectively pray. You know, you don't want to be a clanging gong 
or a sounding brass because you you know uh, they, Jesus went after the Sadducees and Pharisees about making a long prayers and law, having enlarged tassels and all that stuff and they they put all this weight upon the people but they don't lift a hand to do it themselves and so we children of God need to have our hearts open and to be vulnerable to uh, shed it, it's like confession let it all hang out as I say let it all go forth the, the Lord is the king of hearts he knows our hearts anyway so don't try to hide because that, uh, that upsets the Lord be transparent unto the Lord be vulnerable be spontaneous with tears and be vulnerable in prayer like that little mollusk with that trap door being removed so he's now vulnerable and now another item it's called galbanum what is that? What's galbanum? It's a plant. It's a gum-like material, type resin, and is obtained from the stems of this plant. And the, interesting, the resin and the roots are used to make medicine. So you know where I'm going with this one, don't you? People take galbanum for diarrhea, for gas, for a poor appetite, for a seizure disorder, which is epilepsy, it can even be applied to the skin to help heal wounds. So what does prayer do? Does it not? Our prayer, the Lord gives us the healing properties. When you pray, and you pray uh, spontaneously with tears, possibly with tears, and you are, are vulnerable in your prayer to, to the Lord, you go into your closet, as it says, and uh, pray, and, and the healing can come, can it? When you see prayer, what is prayer? Prayer is just talking to God, having communication with God. Uh, I wonder how many marriages would uh, would be successful without communication, without the, uh, the spouse uh, talking to each other and letting each other know how they feel and what's going on. Communication, very important with the Lord. Prayer is eternal. We are on this earth temporarily, but our soul, our spirit is eternal. And that's going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ someday. So the healing I see from the galbanum plant is healing. And as we as we pray that the vulnerability and letting our letting it all hang out, as I said, that healing can come through the prayers. The other item is uh, pure frankincense. Uh, it's from a tree. And it produces resin about eight to ten years old. That's how old the tree has to be to start producing this resin. And they tap the side of it, like they do for uh, if you want in the north here in the United States. We have uh, you want uh, what do they call it? Uh, syrup for your pancakes. Mm -hmm. Well, they tap those trees up north to get syrup for pancakes. Well, they're doing it here uh, to the uh, frankincense tree. They tap it. And as tapping is done two to three times a year, producing the best tears, again tears, and they have a high aromatic content. So there's a wound made in this into the side of the tree to allow the resin or the sap to flow out, then it's captured. So what is the application to us in our prayer life? When we are wounded by somebody in our realm of friendships or people we know we can be wounded and what do we do with that do we uh, exude a beautiful aroma or is it putrid uh, we're called not to be like the world but be better a uh, higher road uh, you know we're on a highway of holiness and so when someone and that will come uh, will be ugly towards us and we feel wounded what are you supposed to do with that fight back we turn evil for evil or are we supposed to take the high road as I said and seek the Lord out does not he have the everything in prayer that we need uh, for forgiveness healing as I've been talking about I think about the al alabaster bottle that was broken and uh, the, the lady we, we read we read the story of the, the lady uh, anointing the feet of Jesus and drying the feet with the tears and all that stuff 
And so when she broke open that alabaster bottle, what happened? The whole room was filled with a uh, beautiful aroma. And so when uh, we're broken, can we fill the room with a beautiful aroma or will it be a, a stink on the God? So because we have our free will, we can do, uh, we can choose to do what we want, but God wants us to do what His will is because His will is perfect, that we can, uh, through His power and His grace, that in the power of the Holy Spirit, we can respond in a positive manner and uh, not return evil for evil. In fact, if that person uh, uh, needs, uh, we will walk with them another mile or give them your coat, as it says in Scripture, what, whatever. Lend them money and asking it not in return. A one-way one deal. So there's a lot of needy folks out there. And as Jesus said, you will have the poor with you always. So we need to pray as this uh, whole message this morning is about prayer. And be like those four ingredients that the Lord told Moses to make the incense in verse thir chapter 30, verse 34. So now we know staked it is spontaneous tears. The oinica is that little mollusk, that little snail, that uh, they take their little trap door off the snail to, uh, to, which makes him vulnerable, as we are to be vulnerable in our prayer. And the galbanum is that a gum-like material resonite told is, comes from a plant that produces healing. It is a healing salve, which prayer does. It brings healing to us when we pray. It's amazing when you pray, you're unloading on the God your desires, wishes, uh, your issues of life. As I talked about the incense or the charcoal, we always we will have issues of life. And how and that what kind of incense are you putting on on your charcoal? Is it sweet smelling, or is it a foul stench? See, so you know. And I said, it's all done within the confines of the church. In a pure frankincense, a wound was made in the side of the tree to draw out the frankincense. And as we are wounded, that uh, as we seek healing from the galbanum and the oinica and the stake, uh, uh, this is the complete. Uh, this is amazing how the Lord, in His wisdom, told Moses to make this incense. And you look at each each individual item. And look at the the how you apply that to prayers. It, to me, it's amazing uh, the wisdom of the Lord and how He had Moses put that all together, and it was used in Moses' tabernacle and Solomon's temple. So I hope this helped you today. Uh, the the, the glory we, when we bring glory to God, we uh, God has given us all these things around us uh, to bring glory to Him. And even when the, the incenser is burning and smoke, and the priest uh, will incense the altar and so forth in, in the, the table of preparation, but he also incenses the people in the congregation, and he's not actually incensing the person, but he's incensing the icon within the person. Think about that, that all of us have an icon in us, and as a priest will incense, he will incense the icon of that person. And, and uh, you know, we have about... Uh, uh, four incense inks during liturgy. We have two great and two minor incense inks, but uh, the point I'm trying to make is uh, our prayers are to be set forth before God as incense. And let the lifting up of our hands be an evening sacrifice. So now we have our homework assignment. We have to go forth and study this video and learn how to pray that's, that is pleasing to God. And God will meet you in your closet and work with you and help you and give you wisdom. Or is that God? Does He care about His children? Yes. Does He want us to pray without ceasing? Yes. We've been, it's in Scripture too. Pray without ceasing. As St. Paul has told us. And we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But we got to have that open communication line with the Lord through prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory forever.